last variation of empirical formula are those hydrated compounds. Um, a hydrated compound is a typically an ionic compound that has um, several, one or more waters covalently bonded to it, um, which means sharing the electrons. So when you write the, the uh, formula for a hydrated compound, you write the name of the normal compound and then a nice little dot, and then you tell how many waters. Pretty simple. When you name it, you use a prefix. You write the name of the compound as normal, and then you use a prefix and the word hydrate to tell how many waters are attached. Um, an anhydrous compound is something that is then lacking its water. For instance, if I took this copper sulfate pentahydrate from up here and I heated it, then I would just have copper sulfate. It also changes the appearance of most of these chemicals. Um, these are solid in their natural form and hydrated in their natural form. And when you remove the water, it often changes uh, some of their physical characteristics. So exercise four is uh, determining the number of hydration in Epsom salts, which are magnesium sulfate. Most of the time this is done by heating the material in a crucible until the mass remains consistent. The ionic compound is almost impossible to, uh, to melt at that point. Most materials can't hold, hold it to melt it. Um, so what you're doing here is you're losing the water. So all the water of hydration is lost on heating a 1.6 eight seven gram sample of the hydrated compound and then it says at the end 0.824 grams of just the MgSO4 the anhydrous are left if I take the difference between the two then I have the water that was driven off Right? And here's where it starts to become like an empirical formula problem. The, the hydrates are, there's always going to be one, a ratio of one of the ionic compound to however many of the water. So the first thing we need to do is to convert them both into moles, just like we have been. So 0.824 grams of magnesium sulfate. The molar mass from that, magnesium plus sulfur plus four oxygens, it's 120.38 grams per mole. Same thing for the water. We took the difference, we got eight, excuse me, 0.863 grams. Its molar mass is 18 grams per mole. And then we get from that, move the paper up a bit here so I know we can see. For the magnesium sulfate, we get 0 0.006845. And for the water, we get 0 0.00, or sorry, 0 0.04, excuse me, 0 0.04789 moles. And then we again, we want to form a ratio between the two, so we divide by the one that has the smaller number of moles, 0 0.006845. That's going to always be the ionic compound. And that will give us a ratio of 1 to 7, it's like 6.997 or something like that. So then we can write our formula, MgSO4 dot 7 H2O and we would name this magnesium sulfate heptahydrate. There it is. That's the end of empirical formula. Good luck.